Okay, cool. So, well, uh, second time lucky. Welcome to the uh, five day emotional uh, challenge, emotional mastery challenge. Uh, so, it's very, very exciting and uh, great to see you guys all here. And if you're watching the replay, I'm sorry that YouTube didn't work, whatever. Here we are. Uh, it's good to be here. So, uh, can everyone hear me now? Awesome. So my intention of the five days is to have everybody step into mastery of emotions because right now uh, it's very important the decisions that we're making going forward. And here's why it's important, okay? Our emotions drive our behavior and drive our actions. Our behavior and our actions create our results. Our results then reinforce existing beliefs, which then create emotions. And so it's very, it's very important to understand that the way that you emotionally react right now is because of beliefs and thoughts. And it's because up here, you have an emotional memory. You have a memory and thoughts and emotion. We're gonna talk about the superconscious. Uh, and a lot of other things today, but you have you have a memory. Now, what's interesting right now is to to really get that we don't know how things are going to turn out over the next while. Does this make sense? Just give me a yes. We don't we don't know. A lot of us think we know, but we don't. No one knows a hundred percent. Okay, no one knows a hundred percent, and we all have biases. Okay. Some of us are biased to be an optimist. Some of us are biased to be a pessimist. Uh, some of us are biased uh, to, to say it's a conspiracy. Some of us are biased to say this and that. And uh, it, it's very interesting to watch yourself and notice well, what is it that you, when you see this, what emotions come up for you? What do you do? Because even though some of us think what we're doing is the right way, uh, it, not, none of it actually helps decision making and the behavior that should go forward. And I'll give you a bit of a story. In, in 2008, I had uh, a share in a, in a bar in a restaurant. And uh, I was a DJ at the time. And when 2008 hit, I, I was an optimist everything's going to be fine. I said, I'm not laying off any staff. Everything's going to be great. Like we're going to win. And I just ignored reality. And that bias really ended. I was like, I just kept putting more money in. I kept doing things. And in the end, I was wrong. Uh, I lost, I lost my business and we had to let go of all the staff that I didn't want to let go in the beginning. And if I just let them go in the beginning, they would have been okay. Um, and we would have just got to the same result faster without me having to put all my life savings into the business and, and really get in a bad, a bad uh, state. Does that make sense, everyone? Does that make sense? Like my bias, it, it wasn't, it was just how I was wired. Uh, I'm wired that way. And so right now, we have to understand that however you're wired, that's what's going to, to show up for you. But that wiring, that coding, isn't actually based on reality, okay? It's not actually reality. It's just how you're wired. So we need to get ourselves into a place where we're not emotional and we're not taking the past and putting it onto the future so we can see what's here and make decisions. This is what I mean by emotional mastery. I mean being able to overcome all of your emotions so that you're able to see things make the right decisions and move forward without the emotions getting in the way. Who likes the sound of that? The people that come out the other side of whatever this is, right? Uh, whether, it, it, whether it's a blip and we're, we're, you know, we're good, whether it turns into a, whatever it is, those who come out the other side are gonna be the ones that stay in their true end result emotion. Don't get swayed, don't get pulled but also are able to clearly look at what's here and make accurate decisions. And I want you to hear that. Your decision-making needs to be clear. And we need to get you into a clear decision-making process because 
it's, uh, it's going to be wonderful. The fertile soil on the other side of this, either this is going to be a small blip and we're all going to be back to normal and, and life was great anyway, so everything's going to be good. Or there's going to be a lot of uh, opportunity open up because others aren't going to be prepared and they are going to leave wide open spaces in markets and economies for those who are ready to look at it. Either way, on the other side of this, those who are prepared, it's going to be, it's going to be really good. So why do you want to be a part of the whole five days? You know, why are you going to stick out five days with me? And why five? That's a really random number. Well, I think that there's five main emotions and I, and I want to, to look at each one of those uh, five main. One, one is, uh, is fear. Uh, one is, I think, anxiety, worry, doubt, and uncertainty. And so I want to focus on, on, on how we feel and each day really get into a place uh, where, where we're clear and we're focused. And so I'll talk a little bit about me because some people that are here uh, may, may not have, uh, have met me or be introduced to me before. I'm going to talk to you about the super conscious method. Can I ask uh, how many of you have had a, had a recode before? Like who's, who's been in the work? Who's done a recode? Nice. Oh yeah. We're going to do some super conscious work today. Who hasn't had a recode yet? Cool. Nice. Nice. Well, a lot of you are going to get that. So uh, a few requests. Uh, number one, I would love to see you guys here every day. Uh, I'm going to announce the every day, the next thing. And uh, I had the intention it was going to be on YouTube. So I'm going to see what the deal with that is and, and figure it out. But it will be every day. So, so I really want you to, to stick it out the whole way through. Number two, this is free. So let's get as many people to know about this, right? Uh, the collective whole is, is needs this. We need to be in this right alignment. So if you can share this out, whatever you want, it's free this week only. Do it. Let's get everyone uh, in alignment. So with that being said, let's, uh, same time, I think, same time, I think, um, I might change by an hour or so, but you guys will know. It's just uh, because it's free, I need to work it in around um, other things that someone, a paying client might uh, ask, <laughs> ask for this time slot. Okay, so then it will move. Um, so it, it may change. So guys, uh, who am I and what do I do? Let me just explain a little bit about me. Uh, uh, I, I've had a really interesting 16 year journey as an entrepreneur. And uh, I found myself in all sorts of different situations, some good, some bad. And about three, four, no, about four and a half years ago, um, I, I was really searching for some answers after one of my companies didn't work out. And I, I found a way to be in a room with a billionaire. And I started asking, uh, you know, this guy and talking to him about, you know, how he was able to go, he, he came with, with no money and build a, a very substantial business, help a lot of people. And uh, uh, here, here's the, just use, just use my YouTube channel to share. And um, from what he taught me, I was able to build a, um, it's actually a $7 million company uh, in, in a couple of years. And it was through understanding a few different things. One is the super conscious, one is intuition and one is universal principles. And so about two years ago, I put all of this together in a program to show everybody how to create a magnetic mind. Um, and here, I'll post you the Zoom link if you like, here you go, uh, here. And uh, we've got a certification where we certify people to do this work on others. Uh, and we have a masterclass that we do. And it's, uh, it's very, very, very exciting work. And I'm going to explain today how it all works and so that you guys can, you guys can truly understand it. See, what happened to me, I grew up working class. Anyone else working class? Is anyone else here, you know, my, like my mother's a nurse, my dad's in telecommunications. We're, we're working class in a beautiful family, lots of love. But 
We didn't understand money. We didn't understand how to create abundance. And, and there's some structures that, that come to play in the working class that really cause, cause conflict. And uh, I'm going to explain those, those structures. But for me, I found myself thinking that uh, there had to be more out there. I had to find a way. So I went on this huge crusade of um, personal development. Has anyone else done a ton of personal development? Like I'm certified in hypnotherapy, uh, NLP, EFT. I've done the emotion code, all of Joe Dispenza's work, Greg, Greg Braden, Bruce Lipton, done all of Robin's work, Matrix Energetics. I've done the MAP Coaching Institute training with Colette Stryker. Just, just, I just was obsessed about, about this work. And uh, for after about 10 years, I, I built a couple successful businesses and, and I'd lost them. And, and um, you know, they went up and down and things happened. And I, I ended up going back to a few different seminars. And uh, this is what was so interesting was the, the seminar leaders that I had trained with years before were still saying the same stuff, but their life hadn't improved that much there were the same people still at the events. And I started to ask and wonder, well, how many people have actually been successful from all of this? All of this, you know, self-empowerment, self-development. And, and, and I realized it is so small. In fact, most people just create a new addiction of trying to fix themselves. And why it was so interesting, because I'd let it go for a couple of years and gone and just worked with some really successful people and they didn't do what I was told to do in all the personal development circles. And it's, it's fascinating, the contrast. And here's one of the things I'm going to say right now, you're not broken. You don't need to fix yourself. There's no beliefs. There's no thoughts that if you suddenly get, you'll be able to create what you love. It's just not true. Everyone's different. And I want, to, I want you to get this right away. Success is not personal. It is 100% true. You cannot track positive thoughts and money. I don't care how many people tell you, you got to think abundant, think abundant. It's ridiculous. I know people that have money who are scarce. I know people that have money and feel abundant. I know people that are fat and have money, healthy that have money. I know people that are single that have money. And I'm just using money as an example because the ridiculous amount around it, like download, activate these codes, you've got to be in this certain emotion to have it. All this crap that, that is just not true. And, and that's really what I'm here to talk about today is, uh, and, then, and then show you how to have any emotion. You can have any emotion you choose. You can have any emotion you choose and have anything you want. So let's just choose to feel good. It doesn't actually impact your, give me a yes if this makes sense. Feeling good is just for feeling good. You can feel good, you can feel great, you can feel confident, but guess what? It doesn't make your chances of making money or having a great, it doesn't change it. This is one of the biggest um, beliefs that have really got us caught is that we have to think or be a certain way. Like, I don't know about you, but have you ever gone to those seminars and there's those extremely positive, happy people that are like jumping out, high five in you. Have any of you been like, that's not me. Uh, Cause I did. I was like, I'm not that. But I got a belief. I thought, well, I have to be completely positive all the time to be able to be successful guys. You look at successful people. They're not that. In fact, a lot of them still are, still haven't actually got over some really basic stuff. Like, for example, Michael Jackson, incredibly successful. He had a lot of things he was working on. Steve Jobs wasn't, wasn't very nice to the people around him. Massively successful. Lady Gaga cries before she goes on stage. Oprah Winfrey. See, they've still got things to work on. They're not these perfect individuals. And the reason why I'm here to say that is to give you relief. To give you relief. You don't need to be or do anything in particular to have what you want. That's separate. Does this make sense, guys? It's separate. Feeling good in your life is over here. It is separate. Because any time, any time you're giving the outside world the reason to change your internal reality, you're knocked out of the wizard's gate. 
you're knocked out of the wizard's gate. And when you're out of the wizard's gate, I'm going to explain what the wizard's gate is today. When you're outside the wizard's gate, you can't manifest hard. You can't manifest fast. In fact, everything is difficult. When I chatted with those that had created extreme success and extreme wealth, what I found is they didn't relate their success to them being any different. That's just who they were. And so let me explain how this happens. By the way, you guys enjoying day one so far? Are we here? Does someone said, I don't know enough wealthy people? Who said that? Where did that go? Yeah, that's right, Grace. Lower. I don't know enough wealthy people. Is that what you mean, Daniel? I know hundreds. I know hundreds of people that have made over a hundred million dollars. Oh, <laughs> cool. In fact, the, uh, who came around and spent time with me yesterday um, created a $250 million business and we were just sitting talking and he's just a cool guy. Really cool guy. Love him. So, so how does this happen? Okay. How does this happen? Well, first off, we're, we're born a pure creative, well, we're pure creative spirit. Okay. We have it all. Have it all. Can you guys see this? Not really. Let me bring this in a bit closer. This is pure creative spirit. Have it all. Okay. We're carried around by our mother. We're carried around by our mother. We have everything. We're fed. We've got oxygen. We've got food. We've got everything. Then we're born. Unfortunately, we're born. And through that, we get wounded, wounded through individ individuation. Okay. Now, what that means is all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we, we enter this world and we have to be something and do something to get what we want. This is the belief structure of the working class, okay? Is we've got to do something. The working class, we don't just have it. So what happens is this is we don't have it all. And this structure here from moving from have it all to don't have it all, this is very painful. We see our parents having to go off and do a job they don't love. We want to go out and say, hey, come play sport with me. Come relax me. No, I've got to go get money. We're ruled by something else, okay? This structure, we make up a belief, and this belief permeates our whole life and causes huge problems, but it keeps us trapped, okay? Who's listening to this right now? Because it's a very important thing. So we get wounded. We don't have it all. Through becoming an individual, we realize we're wounded. But we can't make it true. So we make up a belief. We make up a belief so that we can stop the wounding. We make up a belief to neutralize it. We make up a belief, okay? Now there are six core beliefs. So instead of the world being this hard world that we just don't have at all, do you know what we do? We say, well, may, it must be something to do with me. So we make up and there's six. The first one is I'm not enough. The next one is I'm not worthy. Can someone type these in for me? I'm not enough, I'm not worthy. The next one is I'm not capable. The next one is I'm insignificant. The next one is why well, I need to be perfect. I need to be perfect. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, capable and oh, I don't belong. So I'll start at the bottom, the I don't belong. So all of a sudden, these six self-sabotaging identities we have get made up because we get wounded. Our mom has to go to work, right? Our mom goes to work and we go, why has she left me? Instead of with an adult mind, or well, she needs to go and, you know, get food and stuff, we go, well, maybe I don't belong here. So we create a belief about that, or, well, sh why don't I just have anything? Why don't I have it? Maybe I'm not perfect enough. Why does that family or that kid or that, why do they have it? I'm not perfect. I'm going to try to fix myself. 
The next one is, well, I'm insignificant. Why don't they see me? Why does dad keep leaving? What's going on? Like, am I insignificant? Maybe I'm not capable. Maybe there's something I ought to do. Maybe I need to learn more. I've got to be more. Or am I just not worthy of it? Or am I not enough? And so this structure, this wounding, this belief, creates a lifetime of trying to solve it. Because of all this, we can't become orientated by the belief or structure. And, and let me just explain this for you. A lot of people are still trying to solve the wounding they received through individuation. Most people are still trying to solve the wounding they received through individuation. I see 60 year olds, 70 year olds, 80 year olds, still trying to solve why, why, why am I not enough? Why am I not worthy? What's going on? They're still trying to prove that. They're still trying to prove that. Thanks, Kat. Most of your um, comments, guys, are coming in just to me. You can change it to all attendees here on Zoom if you like. And, and we're still trying to solve that. And we think that if we solve that, then we would have solved, we, we will be better. We think that that's the idea. We think the idea is to solve it. And what happens is we create goals. So we're going to create a goal, like I'm going to become extremely wealthy to prove that this or that. And, and what happens is, is we set up all these things in our life so that none of these can be true. Okay, so we set these things up in our life to avoid any of these things being true. But this actually becomes our trap. This actually becomes our trap. And our trap is what we're seeing right now in society. Because everyone now has to look at themselves not all these things that they think to make them worthy. Okay, hear this. Hear this, guys. How many people right now can't go to work, but that's who they are. They can't go be with their friends and that's how they belong. They can't go be successful. How many NBA basketball players, uh, NFL players can't go play sport and prove how worthy they are? No one's watching it. It's not even on. No one cares. Because there's this other thing, you see? So many people have had to have outside things there to validate their own self-worth. When I hung out with the ultra successful, I mean the ultra successful, the, the true creators on the planet, they weren't in this reality. This is the problem-solving reality. The problem solving reality is when you, when you act and you be in a reality where you say, there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with what I am and what I have. And I'm going to do this over here to resolve that. I'm going to problem solve. And this is a big, big, big thing. Because what happens is most people that in this reality and they end up at a personal development conference and guess what the personal development conference does? The guy on stage reflects his, I'm not good enough on everyone else and says, you're not good enough unless you do this. And then everyone sits there going, yeah, that's right. I'm not good enough. So I'm going to go create that big goal. Yes. And if I had that goal, I would finally be good enough and I would prove to everybody. And they write posts out there like, you know, they'll hate when you're winning. You're and they're in that. They're in that. And, uh, and this structure, who, who gets this, by the way? And this structure, well, you're not good enough unless you, there's even books that say how to be worthy of love. How to be worthy of love, which is crazy. Imagine giving that to a six-month-old. 
how to be worthy, how to be good enough, how to, you know, all these things. And the problem is, is in society, we, we haven't actually got to just know ourselves. We haven't just got to know ourselves and, and be okay with these things. We're so busy trying to run away and fix all of these things. And so the first thing that, that I noticed and I had to do in order to, to make the shift was I had to be it before I could see it. So I'm sitting there. Where, by the way, who's enjoying this? Give me a yes if you are. Is this good stuff? Is this valuable? <laughs> see, I need my validation. <laughs> the first thing that I was told was, Chris, your identity that you have right now is working against your goals. He said to me, you cannot plant seeds of scarcity while trying to grow an abundance forest. What was that? Where was the great good question? Um, there's a question box, guys. If you want to put questions in there, um, then I can get to them. It's in the Q&A box. Colleen? Great question, Colleen. I'm not sure um, what the question is, Scott. So the, the identity. So I must be it before I see it. Be it. So I had this desired reality. And then I have a current reality. The current reality was what I was in was I was not enough. I was a striver. I was somebody that was going for it. And this identity didn't have it. Whatever it is. Instead, the desired identity, instead of not enough, was enough. The desired reality, instead of a striver, was a receiver. Instead of going for it, I would have it. Instead of not having it, well, I would have it. So instead of going for it, receive. And so can you guys all see that this identity does not equal this identity? Give me a yes in the chat box. Oh, I got it, Colleen. I see it. I see it. Um, did you put it in the Q&A? Yeah, thanks, Cyrus. Got it in there. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Cool. I, um, I, will, uh, I will get to that question. So this identity was not this identity. So when I heard this, the first thing I thought was, great. Well, let me fix my identity. And he said to me, but Chris, that's you just reinforcing that you're this. I said, what? He said, well, you're reinforcing that you're not it. You're fixing yourself. You've got to be it. And so this whole new world opened up to me. This whole new world where the old me was always trying to fix the current reality. And he taught me how to step into a new reality and then let go. And I want you to get this. You step into a new reality, then let go, rather than sitting in the current reality trying to fix. Okay? You go here, and then you let go, rather than staying here and trying to fix. And it's a very, very, very different way of doing things. You go into it, you be it, and then you let go. Versus... What personal development has us do, stay here, try to fix and heal the current reality and miraculously pop out somewhere else. You see? And so he said to me, Chris, you must be it. So I'm on this journey to becoming this conscious creator. So I go, okay, cool. So I'll start being it. And so I said, well, is that like fake it till you make it? 
And he's like, well, no, no, it's be it and you will see it. He said, it rhymes the same, so don't try to change what I'm saying. I said, okay, cool, so I'll be it. And he asked me this question and I want you guys all to get this. He said, what would the person that you're becoming do right now? What would they be doing? What would the person that you're becoming do right now? And uh, what I realized is they would do these things. And as soon as I said I would do these things, I had all of these resistance, beliefs, fears, things pop up in my head. You can't do it, all of these things. Now, what he told me, he said, you must just ignore those and stay in it. For me, however, it was so loud that I really struggled with it. Like it was like so loud, you're not good enough. You know, you gotta do more. And I was trying to be, you know, receiving. And so I asked the question, how can I do this faster? And at that time I was, you know, I was studying uh, under mentorship with Dr. Joe Dispenza. And, uh, you know, I got, I got put in a movie with Tony Robbins and the Dalai Lama. And I had access to all these people. And the problem was for me is I'm, I'm inherently impatient. And so an hour and a half sitting in meditation every day or, you know, week long, it was all too slow. I wanted something fast and I was very lucky that I then get introduced to the method that we're going to do today, which is the super conscious method, which actually teaches your brain how to get and to remove all resistance. And when you do that, when you can remove all resistance and you can be it before you see it, that's when you get into the magnetic moment. When you're in the magnetic moment, that's when you become a conscious creator. And that is where you can have it all again. And that's the return home. The return home is to step into your new reality. Let go of who you've been. And become a conscious creator, not a problem solving working class individual. It is a complete different paradigm. You're not trying to fix yourself. A lot of modalities want you to examine the past and try to make the past all good again. You can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and thousands of hours in therapy, EDMR, the emotion code, Psych K, looking at all the things in the past. And guess what? It can be a lifelong journey or you can just accept that you've had a past, that you've had past lives, a past, past emotions, past traumas, and none of us need to trade baseball cards about our past. My one was worse, I had this happen. No, we all have had a past. However, what we need to learn how to do is step into the new us and let go and make it happen fast. And this is, uh, this is very, very different. There is no point going back and trying to resolve your past. Like it's done already, hey, it's done. Let's just learn how to let it go. And that's what the recode does. True, who's done a recode? Give me a, can everyone uh, share some of the experience with the, uh, the recode in here, let the others know, because I'm about to talk about it, then we're gonna do one. Uh, the recode teaches the aspect of your brain how to recode the way it's showing up. All right, so how it works is I access a part of you called the super conscious. And uh, most of us understand at about uh, four years to now, from four years on to now, we have an ego or self conscious. We all understand from four years to now that our thinking brain has been there. Most of us know that if this is um, when you're born, age zero, uh, and a little bit before that, about here, all the way to now, most of us know we have an unconscious, or some call it subconscious. Okay, so this, this here is your uh, emotions, 
this is your limbic system, et cetera, et cetera. So this is what's working automatically. This here, this is your thinking brain. Now, what many don't realize is that there is something that is passed down. Can you guys see? Yeah. That is passed down from humanity and from family and kicks kicks in all the way to now. And this is called your super conscious. Now, the first person that I found to use the word super conscious was Carl Jung. And the other one was uh, Edgar Tracy, the sleeping psychic, uh, Edgar Casey, the sleeping psychic. And the super conscious is your innate intelligence, okay? It is passed down through family and intelligence in your DNA that explains and helps you to become you. Now, we all know that we can get health conditions passed through. We all know looks. We all understand uh, intelligence, those sort of things. Traits all get passed through. But also, Bert Hallinger's work lets us know that we're passing down traumas and memories. See, when a baby is born, it has an inherent trauma of a snake. A sn it's inherent. It's that snake, but not scared of other things. It's there. It's a memory. It's there before the, 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 the it's already there. There is inherent fear. It's already there. There's a fear of heights. And so what's interesting, at four weeks old is when the heart starts beating. Four weeks old, that's when the spirit enters. But let me ask you this. Sperm and the egg come together and then they replicate. Then they replicate. Then all of a sudden, some of this replication starts turning into organs and skin and bones and what's telling it which ones to do what what's that instruction and a lot of us say well where is that from and, and that's what we talk to as the super conscious most of us don't have a connection with our super conscious but here's what i want you to get is all of this in summary is a memory all of it is a memory. All of it is a memory. All of it is a memory structure. And so if it is a memory structure, whether it has been from the superconscious memory, unconscious memory, or self-conscious memory, because these memories start at different times, it's all a memory. So when I do this work, okay, no, I'm not just suggesting, I'm, I'm letting you know it is. It is a memory. And what I mean by memory is a physiological memory. DNA has a memory to it. Guys, give me a yes if this is landing with you. I want to make sure this is good. It's all a memory structure. It's passed down. And because it's a memory, neurons in our head, our heart and our gut, our DNA, because it's a memory, it was always there. And so because it's a memory, it learned all the language. See. This memory's been here for this long. It's all, it was here the whole time. And so when, when I communicate to this aspect of you, when I communicate to this aspect of you, I can communicate to it in English because it's a memory. It understands. What you haven't realized is most work does some work here on the unconscious. Some of us go and read books and we try to just change here. I want to let you know if you're not doing change in, in between zero and four, there's a lot of programming in here. But the reason why we don't want to just stay in the unconscious, we want to go down here to the superconscious, is because the predispositions that have happened here are actually passed down from humanity, from your family structure in through to you. And that's where we do the work. When we do the work here, it impacts here and impacts here, which then impacts the now, the now, the now. So we come back here and uh, our method, uh, the superconscious transformation method, it's very gentle because you don't have to relive it. We, what we do, okay, what we do is something very, very interesting. 
And I learned this from very wealthy people. We first ask, what do we want? What do you want to create? We second ask, how does having that feel? How does having that feel? Then we say, where am I now? Now, by doing that, we've now focused the person on moving forward. What do I want? Where am I now? When you then go to take the action, you have the same experience as me. Your past, so you're here, your past comes in to try to block that action. And that's what we recode. We're only recoding resistance to action. We're not actually changing you, because here's why. You're freaking perfect. You don't need changing, it's just you have memories that are trying to get in and stop what you want. So we don't sit here and try to fix someone. I've created huge miracles and healings for people. They come to me with, you know, cancers and they come to me with diabetes and they can't. And the first thing I say is, is they say, well, I need to solve this. I say, no, nah, what do you want? And they say, I want this. I want a healthy body. Great. How would that feel? What belief systems, structures, I did what's in the way we connect to the super conscious and we remove that so that we can act. Does this make sense, guys? It's so big to understand that. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do an experience and then we're gonna be doing one each day. This is the intro so that everyone's on the same page as we do it. So how does this actually work? Well, first off, this is you and you have your own boundary and this is me, Chris Duncan. Outside of your boundary, you have a field. You have a field and I have a field. And this field, so this is my, this is you, and this is my field. That's me. That's the edge of me. Okay. Outside of that, you have a field, and this field is your family. And this field is coming down and telling the you, telling the me how to look, how to be, and there are set instructions coming from this family field down to me, okay? Outside of that field, you have another field, and then you have another field, and this field here is called the superconscious. Now, I want you to see the superconscious, I'm in the superconscious, and you are too. So you can go out to your family, I can, but we, if we both go out to the superconscious out here, this is where we become one. This is where we become one. So when we do the work later, I'm gonna be out in the superconscious. You're gonna give me permission to access your superconscious. Does this make sense? You give me permission, I'm gonna to connect to you because we are one across time and space. And from there, I'm going to ask to recode your memories and it's so profound, it's gonna blow you away. After 30 years of clinical research, this amazing guy, Dr. Gary Flint, brought some of this work together. It came through him to Colette Stryker and she was amazing. I talked to her this week, I love her. She worked with me and I'm bringing it to you bringing billionaire wisdom and alchemy together into this beautiful system. So uh, who would like to have this experience of the recode? Because we're going to do one every day. It's, it's wild. Here's a little bit about how the recode works. Okay. Here's a little bit about how it works. Uh, uh, I just want to tell your brain that there's, there's different memories and there's different aspects of you that will, will come in and are there for your benefit, okay? So for example, if, you know, three generations ago on your mom's side, uh, you had a lot of wealth. And then because of that, that wealth, people broke into your house and slaughtered your family. That would code up a trauma that says, don't have any wealth that can be living inside of you and showing up today. And you wonder why you can't hold on to it. 
same with public speaking, same with stepping out, same with business, same with whatever. Now, there's nothing wrong with that belief. There's nothing wrong with that aspect of you. Does that make sense? I mean, that's a very easy thing to say. Well, look, we're just not going to have money again because this bad thing happened. Does that make sense? So there's nothing wrong with it. But what we would prefer is instead of every time we try to create wealth in our life, this thing coming out and, and, and stopping us, what we prefer is to, to see that and to treat the trauma and say, hey, look, like we want to bring all of these lessons and learnings together. We don't want to have the trauma popping up every time we try to make some more money because that's actually decreasing our satisfaction in life. So we want to bring all of those lessons and learnings and we want to say, well, look, let's have money, but maybe, you know, there's other things we need to learn and it brings us together. Can you see, can everyone give me a yes? Can you see that conflict with that person I just made up? That is a huge conflict. And so what I always think is there's nothing wrong. We just have to understand as we take an action towards something, what pops up? A lot of people in this climate we're in right now, I even see it. They're saying, this is a war. This is the war of our lifetime. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, um, I thought there was just a virus that we need to just go into hibernation for a little bit and then we're going to be okay. Do you see that? So why are they all of a sudden, this is a big war. You see the metaphor, the coding coming through. It's because of a predisposition passed down, right? It's very interesting. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to help the superconscious to see what's in the way of our new choices and then to be able to just bring them all together. So superconscious, how this works is we're going to create a new choice and it's like you're playing football on a football field. When we create this choice, gophers are going to pop out of the ground in defense of that choice. And they're going to create little mounds of dirt that doesn't let us get there. You see? And so when we make this choice, I want all of this, all of this to come out. And then since we created it, what we want to do is I'm going to give commands to treat it and we'll just smooth over each one of these with a feather so that the ground is flat again so that we can then just run towards what we want and play on the playing field. Does this make sense? Can I just quickly check? Does, does, do you get that? Does you, do you, does you, when I ask you, do you get that? Does it make sense? Oh, cool. I understand how that's going to work. We're going to call it out, connect, and uh, we're going to smooth it over so that it's not in the way. Does it make sense? Well, we're going to do a closed eye exercise in a second. So I'll ask you, you'll, you'll close your eyes. We'll bring out all the resistance. We'll let it go. But I want you to understand we're not fixing you. You'll still be the same. You just won't have these things pop out in your way every time you want to do what you want. Is it, by the way, who's ever felt, you know, triggered emotions come out of nowhere? You know, you're there doing business, everything's good. And then all of a sudden you're sidetracked by something you didn't even know was there. Uh, we call these dormant memories. And you have lots of dormant memories floating around in your superconscious field, waiting for a reason to turn up. And it's, uh, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. Uh, and once we let it go, um, what happens is it's like a slingshot. You just, you just go towards what you want. You just, you, you just sail down the river. There's no, if you want that, you go for it. There's no, see in life, success should just be, oh, I, want, I want to make more money. I need to start a business and I just go for it. All this other stuff is all just memories and structures that we're bringing into reality. I mean, guys, business is really, really easy. Like you need to deliver value to someone in a way they want to pay for it. And there's infinite ways to do it, right? There's infinite ways to deliver value to another human being in a way they want to pay for it. And then you just got to figure out a way to do that without your own time.
But see, when I say the simplicity of that, how, how complex and hard have we tried to, tried to make it? So um, guys, if you want to do this, give me a yes and let's, I'm going to sit down and we'll do this recode. And uh, I think we're all, we're, I think we're all ready. I think we're all ready. I'm still here, by the way. <laughs> uh, it's funny. <laughs> it's the small things. It's the small things. <laughs> it's good. Okay, so um, let's start with the uh, the question. What would you like to create? Okay, so question number one is um, what is your end result? What is something you would like to create? Can be a feeling, um, can be something that you manifest. What would you like to create? So either type in a number one or type in what you'd like to create. Um, so I know it's done. Either a number one or type it in. Um, just, just what comes to mind? What would I like to create? Financial abundance. What would I like to create? A profitable business. What would I like to create? A happy family. Just, um, just, just whatever it is. Either give me a number one or type it in just so I know it's done. I'll wait till I see at least 30 of you um, reply so I can keep going. Yeah, John, what would that give you? What's the end result of that? Okay, so the step number two is we want to, to feel it. Okay. Yeah, so John, let's choose a lot of clients. Yeah, bit better choice. Yeah. We'll always go for the bigger choice. Uh, maybe it shows up through appointments. Maybe people just bring, you know, ring and pay you. All right. <clears throat> All right. So what I want you to do is um, you're going to do it like this. You'll close your eyes and you just want to experience having that now. It's important to let your brain and your superconscious know where you're going. Okay. So close your eyes and just experience having that now. What would it be like if you had that now? Feel it. What would it be like if I had that now? How would I feel if that was my reality? What would my body be like if I had that? How would it feel if I had that now? Yeah, just allow yourself to feel it. How would it feel if you had that now? What would it be like? How would it really feel? Mm. How would it feel to have that now? What would life be like? Great. All right, open your eyes and come back. Step number three is um, what's it like now? So compared to that, what's the current reality? So compared to having it now, what's the current reality? So type in a number three or write it down once you've done number three. What's it like now? What's it like now? there's my good luck charm those that are in my certification know when the dogs bark it's going to be a great recode all right so now we're going to we're going to do the recode so 
So what's in the way? What's in the way between where you are and where you want to be? So first, what beliefs, what beliefs stop you? So what beliefs stop you having that now? And just write these down. You can type them in if you like. What beliefs stop you having that now? What would you have to believe to not be able to have that right now? What emotions stop you having it? When you think about this goal, when you think about this goal, yeah, so someone said, feeling like I don't know how to get there. So what would someone believe to have to feel like they don't know? Yeah, so I believe that I don't know enough or something, yeah. Yeah, got it, Brad. I see you, bro. Um, when you think about this goal, how are you conflicted? Is there parts of you that want it, then parts of you that feel guilty about it or worried if you had it or fear of losing it? Um, I really would like it, but I really would want it, but it'd be great to have it, but. So I want to ask you, when you think about this, this choice, when you think about this choice, out of 10, how much resistance do you have? 10 out of 10 resistance is like you're swimming upstream. Zero out of 10 resistance is you just float downstream towards it. Out of 10, how much resistance do you have? Five to 10 or five out of 10? <laughs> five to 10 is quite a broad spectrum. So I think it's five out of 10. Yeah. 8.9, that's specific. Um, all right, cool. So I'm just, I want everyone uh, who's going to do this with me to put their number in because it's not important necessary for me, it's important for you. How much, how much resistance do you feel? 10 is like swimming upstream, it is so difficult, and zero is downstream. I believe um, if you have over five resistance, you, you probably will just avoid doing it or just have to, it'll be real tough. Cool. Okay, so um, get yourself ready. I'm just waiting for the last few people. The way that the recode works is it's closed eyes. It's not uh, hypnosis, it's not NLP. Um, the reason why we close our eyes is allow you to be quiet and just be centered and to notice. Uh, what, what you do is you give me permission to connect to your super conscious. And what I do is I connect to your super conscious. Okay, I come out here, I'm gonna connect to the whole field. And then from the super conscious perspective, we're gonna ask it to recode everything that you've said plus everything else that's in the way of, of that choice, okay? So uh, you need to give me permission and that's up to you. So it's, I wanna let you know it's a completely safe process because you're the one giving me permission. The more open and permission you give me to connect, the more I can help remove resistance. And I kind of just want to let you know that that no aspects of you like, you know, will die because of this different aspects of you that have been there that are causing protection and things. They, they just get treatment and they just join, right? They just join at the moment. It's like, there's a part of you that wants it and a part of you that doesn't want it. Does that make sense? And it's like, you've got this internal civil war going on. And the truth is, is this internal civil war. Everyone just wants to have a happy life more satisfaction, less pain. And since there, it's a civil war inside of one place, we just wanna get everyone together and agree 
and share information on how every part of you can get the most out of life. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So no part dies, everyone's there. And uh, I just want to make sure that all aspects of you really just want to feel good and, and have this. So if you give me permission, um, you can close your eyes and just in your heart and in your mind, uh, I give Chris Duncan permission just in your mind and send it out there. Um, I'll do this closed eyes as well. So I won't be looking at the, the screen. And so, yeah, so close your eyes, choose to get the most out of this and, uh, and choose to give me permission. Just, just give me, um, give me a second. Cool. Okay, cool. I'm going to talk to your super conscious like it's a person. Super conscious, are you there? Do you give me permission to connect? Okay, cool. Just make sure to give me permission. Uh, do you see this choice, this new end result that you want to create? And can you notice all the resistance popping up in the way? Great. Okay. Do all aspects and identities want treatment so they can have more satisfaction and less pain? Superconscious, please create a perfect treatment plan in the perfect order and do a massive change history and everything is needed. Thank you. And just notice, I'm going to keep giving commands. So just notice and stay with your eyes closed, stay present. Superconscious, can you please treat all emotions, fears, and worries? Thank you. Superconscious, can you treat the metaphor of war being a victim, being attacked. And please go back across at least, at least 10 generations on both mother's and father's side and treat all emotion related to that. Thank you. Okay, that's a big command. It's just taking a while to process, so just stay with it. Superconscious, please treat all body systems, shoulders, neck, chakras, back, lower back, chest, lungs, and all systems related to stress. Do a massive change history and everything is needed. Allow energy to flow easily. Thank you. Okay, for some of you, there's some um, there's some resistance to there's some resistance to um, treatment. So if it's okay, I just like to connect to the the aspects resisting treatment, the identities. I just want to explain the benefits of treatment. So number one, first benefit is your work together and have more satisfaction, less pain. Number two, you can stop reliving the past and wasting time. 
Number three, you can you can stop self sabotage and have all working together and share information. Yeah. Okay, great. Superconscious, please treat all identities that are that are causing resistance to this end result or choice. Please treat to a massive change history and everything is needed. Thank you. I'd like to uh, I'd like to just have all resistance put in a big bubble. So firstly, super conscious, can you tag anything that pops up? When I say these statements related to the choice, I will have this choice. I can have this choice. I trust I'll have this choice. I am this choice. I am this end result. I am this identity. Superconscious, please treat anything that came into the active experience in the perfect way, in the perfect order. Please treat it down to zero. Superconscious, please treat broken promises, secondary intentions, and family history. The massive change history and everything is needed. Thank you. Oh, there we go. That's it. Oh, cool. Replace all memories we've touched today, all emotions with self-love, courage, and other emotions needed. Okay, I want to check in with everyone. If you'd like to open your eyes and uh, and come back, let me know how you how you going. Um, that was really cool. We were in there and there was a lot of you moving and shifting. And then um, we're going to do another one. And then at one point it just went clink and a whole heap. You just, just let go of so much. Uh, anyway, uh, it was great. So tell me, um, what was your uh, number before we started? And then when you think about that end result now, Where's your resistance out of 10 now? Three to zero, that was great, above the clouds. Eight to four, eight to four, seven to 10 to zero, zero. Having trouble coming back, it's so great. <laughs> Five to three, seven to two, seven to four, 12, eight to one. <laughs> Eight to three, still at zero, couldn't stop laughing. Good. Eight to six, seven to four. I feel so good. I don't know. Let's go with zero. I was crying. Wow. 8.9 to one, <laughs> seven to three. Oh, that's good, Cat and Mark. Felt it. All right, cool. So why don't we get this down to zero for those who want? We'll do another um we'll do another another round if you're already at zero just just close your eyes and come hang out in the field with us for a little bit so uh awesome shifts everyone awesome shifts 
So just close your eyes and, and choose how much permission you want to give me. I mean, I'm just going to give you commands. You're in control. Choose, choose to give me permission. Now you know how it goes. Choose to allow the connection to your superconscious. I'm just going to give your superconscious some commands. And the reason why we do that is we, we can't just change everything. There's, uh, it's not about fixing you. There's only certain things in the way. Superconscious, do you remember the, the metaphor? Do you understand treatment process? Yeah. Is there any other resistance or identities that have woken up that now need treatment to reduce this resistance? Let's bring every identity, every thought and emotion into the active experience now that's causing resistance. To do that, super conscious, can you go into the end result? Go into the end result, into the choice you're choosing. You're there. Go there now. How would it feel? Superconscious, do you see everything? Do you notice everything that's in the way of this? Yes. Can you put it into one big bubble behind you? Can you treat all connection, all emotional connection, but keep all the learnings? Superconscious, please treat everything down that is needed down to zero, including the original event. Thank you. Feels like rubber bands are just snapping and you're leaving it behind and you're forward focused in your end result. Superconscious, do you see any identities that are holding on to this old emotional signature? Yes. Yeah, we do. Okay. Superconscious, please treat all the identities, the wounded inner child, the protector controller, the people pleaser, the victim, the achiever. Please treat both connection with mom and dad. Thank you to a massive change history and everything is needed to bring this resistance to zero. Oh, just take some big breaths. There's lots moving right now. It's great. And just bring that all in and just ask yourself, can I feel the end result now? Can I be it before I see it? Can I have it already? What action would I take now that I'm this? And you can open your eyes and come back to now and let me know your final number. Cool. Thanks, Marie. Zero. Thanks, Anne. Zero. Brad. Zero. Peter. Two. Natalie. Zero. Does anyone else feel a vortex of energy? You just sent that to me, um, D. Long. John. One. Ten. Six. Two. Grace. Zero. Steph. Two. Colleen. Zero. Still at zero. Beautiful process. One. Gentry. Scott. Zero. Julie. Zero. Joel. Zero. Rudolph zero, Wesley one, I'm still at five. No, that's fine. Uh, 
it's, it's not about being unhappy with it. It's just allowing yourself to know that you can only process so much at, at a time. I hope I say this right. Is it, is it Junko? Uh, you can only process so much at, at, at one time before you're going to unstabilize your identity. So it's fine. Daniel one, good stuff, brother. Lisa zero. Hey, Daniel, we are taking on some one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, your name popped up in our awareness today when we were talking about it. So watch out for that. It's coming. Cat 721, Mark 920, Shelly 1. Nice. Where's the zero? The old resistance seems silly now. Cool. 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 So this is this new work and it's very gentle. You don't have to relive old traumas. You can just let it go. Um, yeah, maybe a, a grounding, a grounding walk, but it's, um, this is why I'm so passionate about the super conscious work because, uh, I just worked with right now. There's, there's 40, 41 people, um, here on the zoom call. Um, there was hundreds on YouTube, but you guys are the ones that are here and uh, I can work with, uh, I can work with the huge groups and have huge results rather than other modes. You just got to, you know, it's all got to be one-on-one -on -one. feel shivers and feel like laughing. Awesome stuff guys. No, I'm not sure what it means. What's it? I'm not, I don't know what it, it is either. Why did I get someone's name come up in my head? I don't know. You always ask me these big questions. I don't know. So um, who thinks this is pretty cool work? Give me a yes if you do. Uh, give me a yes if you think this is really cool stuff. So look, I'm going to be here available for free for you this week. Um, after that, you really should join our masterclass and those sort of things or get certified in this work. But for this week, I'm free. I'm going to be here. Um, so who's excited about this? you know, it, it is going to change the world. Please share this out. Please. Uh, th someone asked me how many times does it for, take it to stick? The, that, that's, that's an irrelevant, that, that's not, a, that's not a, a, a good question to ask. That question's coming from a belief that we need to recode um, that says uh, this isn't possible. So what I would like you to do is read, um, read uh, the brain that heals itself uh, or how the brain heals rather from Norman Doig. Yeah. Get some knowledge on neuroplasticity. Awesome. I love you all. So uh, I'm going to be on same time tomorrow. Um, please uh, have my, e if, do you get my emails? If you get my emails, please um, put it so that you, you get them, put them in the right folder. Uh, I'm going to go figure out that YouTube situation. Uh, it'll be, I think it'll be the same time tomorrow, um, but I'm going to go figure out the, uh, how the brain heals by Norman Doy, Dr. Norman E. Doidge, D-O-I-D-G-E. Great guy, great book. Um, yeah, so please get the emails, um, put them on whatever you need to do to see them, because that's how I will, I will communicate to you about this. I'll send you an email. Um, please tell your friends, I'm going to put this video up on YouTube now so that everyone else can get it as well. Thanks for being patient. That beginning was crazy with all the, uh, the, the, the buffering and those sort of things. Um, but, uh, it is what it is. Hey, and we all got here. So Share this out, share it out, share it out. Let's get them all. I'll post this up and send you the link. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye.